Welcome. Uh, we are about to see a very uh, important topics that is the um, osteokinematics, orthokinematics, and understanding this to the core level and application on these concepts on the rehab aspect of, uh, say, for example, the shoulder joint. Okay, let's move. Uh, basically, a movement. Uh, is uh, being defined as either osteokinematic or orthokinematic and as this says osteo refers to bone so osteokinematics is nothing but the definition of the movement with regards to the bone itself for example when we move a segment of the body or the limb for example we say it has to be either flexion, abduction, extension or something which is regarded to the term of the bone for example here it's the humerus moving forward we say it to be the flexion and towards back is the extension and away from the midline is abduction so that is how it is termed it is osteokinematic for example it is like flexion extension etc so next important thing is the arthrokinematic term arthro a r t h r o refers to joint for example arthroscopy any keyhole surgery into the joint so here it is arthrokinematics that is the movement that takes place between the two surfaces of the joints okay joint i mean two surfaces of the joint for example as we see it is flexion extension whereas here it is either a roll second one is the slide or the spin okay so let us see what happens to the joint surface in the roll roll is something um, well, well, before going into the roll first we would uh, describe these things with keeping one surface as stable and one surface as the moving one so one you imagine one to be stable and one to be the moving one so now rolling is something like the classical example of there's a roll and there is a wheel. You suppose there is a point of contact in the tire and there is point of contact in the road in rolling different points this will come here and this will go and meet there so it is like a tire rolling on the road surface so it happens in the bone so for example it is like this if you see see the convexity of the humerus and the concavity of the glenoid surface it is like that so different points of the humeral head rolls on the stable surface of the glenoid so next is the slide slide is something like when the rolling tire breaks and skids along the road surface it is like this it is the moving surface point example let us take it as a the a of the moving surface meets different points of the stable surface it is like the braked wheel which is sliding on the road okay so it is if you see in the glenohumeral joint it is something like this rolling was something like that sliding was something like this or like this it is rolling actually the mechanical joint is not allowing if you want to see it in the exact bone 
rolling is something like that whereas sliding is something like this like this okay next is supposed to be the spinning movement of the joint surface it is basically rotational movement like for example a top spinning on a fixed surface and it rotates on its own axis so in the human bone it is something like this when you do abduction and do this lateral and medial rotation what you have is spinning of the humeral head on the fixed glenoid cavity now that we have seen what happens in arthrokinematics that is very important thing we must know that is the concave and convex rule so what is this concave and convex rule when we speak about arthrokinematics it is about all about two joint surface one joint surface will be either concave and the other joint surface may be like convex surface so there is some principle you need to keep it in mind always and you need to imagine for every single joint before applying any manipulative or mobilizing technique to have a result so there is something called as concave convex rule if you take elbow as an example either the capitalium or the trochlea for example let us speak about the capitalium it is the convex surface now in the elbow if the humerus is stable the forearm segment is going to go up so which means the concavity of the head of the humerus slides one minute, slides up to make the flexion and slides down to make the extension so what happens is this concave surface slides in the direction same direction as that of the bony lever that is what it means whenever a concave surface moves on a stable convex surface the gliding the gliding and the movement of the bony lever all in the same direction okay so how do we apply on treatment aspect if suppose the patient is going to have elbow flexion restriction out of fracture around the elbow region you need to glide the humeral radial joint surface to improve the flexion in the same direction of the bony lever so that is how you have to apply it. so concave surface on convex surface gliding and the bony movement all both in the same direction so the reversal of this is now the moving surface is the convex for example the shoulder joint the moving surface is the convex humeral head and the stable surface is the concave glenoid cavity so now when the moving surface of the convex is going to move over the concavity of the glenoid cavity it moves in the opposite direction how is it you see for example when you lift the arm towards abduction the bony lever goes up whereas the convexity of the articular surface slides down so the bony lever goes up whereas in the joint surface the sliding happens in the opposite direction this goes superiorly and this goes inferiorly so let us uh, say for example after abducting the adducting component if you see the bony lever goes down whereas the gliding happens superiorly so that is how it is so to apply that concept the convex surface when it moves on the convex concave surface the gliding 
and the bony movement occurs in opposite direction. So how do you apply this concept on treating a shoulder mobilization? So it is like to improve the abduction, you need to glide the humeral head in the inferior direction. So it is like that, the stable glenoid will be like that. To improve the abduction, you need to do lot of inferior gliding movements to improve the abduction. In case if you need to improve the flexion of the glenohumeral joint, if you can see the ball rolls back, so the bone moves forward, whereas the convex head moves backward, that is nothing but posterior gliding, it goes posteriorly, so do those posterior glides. So this is how you will have to imagine these two concepts on your mobilizing or manipulative treatment joint areas. So this is all about the osteokinematics, orthokinematics and applying this concave and convex rule on treating the joint. For this you need to know the anatomy of the bony surfaces of the joint, each particular joint. So you will have to go, sometimes it will not be directly concave and convex, sometimes we are the saddle kind of orientation. So you need to be careful in which orientation you are mobilizing and you need to, which bone you are stabilizing. So you need to take care of all those things into concern. Um, moreover, to finish off, you will also have to know about something called as joint play movements. So what is joint play movements? If you see the, either the abduction of the shoulder humeral head in the shoulder joint, the humeral head is large and there is no articulating uh, congruency for the glenoid here. So what happens is whenever the arm is abducted, you need simultaneous sliding. So to examine the patient, suppose imagine this model or the patient to be in supine before applying the manipulative, you could check with how much joint play movements is available. That is passively when you fix one bony segment and move the other part of the bone, you could see how far it is posteriorly guiding, how far it is anteriorly gliding, how far it is superiorly or inferiorly gliding and then you apply your techniques. If, suppose if you find that it is restricted, it is not going and obviously the movement is also not possible. So you first examine what available joint play movements is there inside and then apply your technique. So hopefully I think this information will be very helpful to you. Thank you, stay tuned and sus subscribe to our Priya Prems Physio Academy YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Nandri.